If you often feel uncomfortable with your approach and frustrated with the accuracy, the problem lies in the timing. I came to this conclusion after a long time of struggling with the release and accuracy. So, in this video, I will explain and help you enhance your timing. The timing of two-handed bowlers is basically the same as one-handed. However, if you look at the best two-handed bowlers in the world, they have a very similar timing model. Traditionally, you have early timing, late timing, and neutral timing. Early timing is when your sliding foot stops. The ball is a little passing your ankle. Late timing is when your sliding foot stops. The ball is behind your ankle. And neutral timing is when your sliding foot stops. The ball is right at your ankle. The timing that most pro two-handed bowlers use is late timing. They rarely use neutral timing and nearly never early timing. Let's look at the slow motion timing of Jason Belmonte, Anthony Simonsen, Kai Utrup, Chris Vai, and Oscar Palama. When the sliding foot stops, the ball is usually behind the ankles. This is when they start to accelerate their release. Do you know why this timing model works for two-handed bowlers? The reason lies in the shorter arm swing of two-handed bowlers. When the arm swing is shorter, the ball tends to reach the foul line earlier than one-handed swing. If the ball comes to the foul line before your sliding foot stops, you will lose your balance when releasing the ball and damage your accuracy. That's why you need to make the timing later to compensate for the short arm swing. So how to make your timing later? Let's follow this guide. The key is in your second step with the five-step approach and the first step with the four-step approach. Traditionally, when bowling one-handed, we often remember that when the right foot begins to stay forward, your right hand will start pushing the ball away. To achieve late timing with two-handed bowling, your right hand only begins to push the ball away just before the heel of the right foot touches the ground. Some pro bowlers only push the ball away when the heel of the right foot already touches the ground, just like Kai Troop. I recommend you try both cases and take the one you like best. I was once a one-handed bowler using early timing. When I switched to two-handed bowling, I used the early timing as an old habit. The result was not quite as expected. I always have to rush to the foul line before the ball, hence losing my balance. My accuracy is not better than my balance indeed. When I apply the late timing, the problem is resolved. I also have to say that the feeling of switching from early timing to late timing is not comfortable at the beginning. It is somehow weird though, because my body has adapted to the old timing for a very, very long time. It takes a while to change, but the result is truly amazing. I combined the late timing with the drift step technique in the last video to create my own style. If you like it, you can refer to the drift step technique in the video at the upper right corner of the screen. Another thing to remember is you need to walk with your heel, not your toe, to optimize the footwork timing. In other words, we should be aware that a footstep should begin with the heel, then the toe. Previously, I usually focused on the toe with my footwork and tended to lean forward too much and too soon during my approach. This is never a good thing for my timing and accuracy. Rather than that, I found a way to reverse this, and here is my trick. Normally, most right-handed bowlers stand with their left feet higher than their right ones, like this. Now, I reverse the order. I put my right foot higher than the left one. I stand tall and don't lean forward too much from the beginning. My first trip step would be backward to the left side. The first trip step is led by the left heel, so you should feel and think about the left heel when moving your feet. At the end of the first step, most of the body weight is on the heel of the left foot, so my right foot is now free to move at the second step. The second step with the right foot will follow the same direction as the first step, meaning it will also be backward. The second step is led by the right heel. Suppose I want to have a medium launch angle, I mean the ball launch angle. The right heel will end at the middle of the left foot. 
and the maximum launch angle will be with the right heel adding just before the left toe. I have to emphasize that the right arm only begins to tuck inside when the right heel is about to touch the ground. In other words, during the time of the right heel moving backward to the same direction as the left heel, you have nothing to do with your right arm. Just hold it there. If you tuck your right arm inside earlier, the timing is becoming early, which is not what we are trying to achieve. This is the whole process. Left foot steps backward to the left. The right heel follows in a backward manner. Before the right heel touches the ground, my right arm begins to tuck inside. After that, the weight of the ball will pull the body forward into the third state. When this process is done, step three, four, five will happen naturally without much consciousness. I also recognize that when applying this trick to my footwork, my first two steps become smaller. Both feet are nearly close to each other after the first two steps. This is an advantage for me because my first two steps used to be longer than usual. When your first two steps are longer, your body kinetic energy is stretched even. You won't be able to have an impulsive feeling when releasing the ball. The impulsive feeling is the crucial source of energy for ball speed and rev rate. It is like the gun is about to propel the bullet out of its barrel. You can see my first two step is now shorter than before, right? These first two short steps help me have a better room to transfer the most kinetic energy from my whole body to the ball and propel it to the lane. The more kinetic energy from the body is accumulated and transferred to the ball, the more speed and rev rate the ball has when projected to the lane. There's another scientific evidence to back this up. It is when you want to move quickly towards a direction, you need to move your feet to the opposite direction to have the body weight transfer to the intended direction. It is similar to when I move backward in the first two steps and begin to accelerate forward in the third step. I learned this from a sport trainer in Japan. You can see his video in the upper right corner of the screen if you like. Because my first two steps become shorter, I must move my stance nearer to the foul line to fit the timing, you see? The magical thing is, my bone speed is not hurt at all. That's amazing. My feeling of timing is way better than before, and my accuracy is considerably improved. Hey, you can try this tip. Who knows if it works for you too. Now it's time you hit the lens and try my tips. If it helps improve your game, don't forget to subscribe and give me some comments. Also, like or share this video with your friends if they want to improve. See you in the next video. Until then, enjoy bowling.